Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Lindsay McGowan and I am Head of Business Development at Biopharmaspec. And I'm joined today by three experts in the field of protein characterization for a discussion around the relationship between the structure and function of biopharmaceuticals. I have with me today Richard Easton, who's Technical Director at Biopharmaspec. Hello, Richard. Hello, Lindsay. And also Dan Mamalak, who's president and founder of Custom Biologics. Hi, Dan. Hi, hi Lindsay. And also Andrew Reason, who's CEO and MD at Biopharmaspec. Good afternoon, Andrew. Hi, Lindsay. So thank you all for joining me today. The main thing I wanted to discuss was how the primary and the higher order structure of proteins can have specific effects on the function of the drug and also how we can monitor this and characterize this relationship. So Biopharmaspec is a CRO that's specializing in analyzing the structure of biopharmaceuticals and Custom Biologics assesses the functional attributes. So I'm really interested to hear about the synergies between uh, both the company's respective analytical activities. Andrew, how exactly is it that the activities and services of Custom Biologics and Biopharmaspec align? Well, Lindsay, the structure and function uh, requirements are really in inextricably linked in terms of characterization of biopharmaceuticals. Uh, the global regulators require an understanding of what the product is, which is obviously uh, the structural side, and what the product does, the, the functional side. The structure function relationship has to be assessed across the whole development of a product. And it's very important to understand the product in that sense, all the way from its inception um, through to when it's actually on the market. In general terms, and in, in an ideal sense, of course, batches of uh, biopharmaceutical product will be shown to be structurally similar and have similar functionality, whether that's a, a, an activity test or, or indeed binding for an antibody. But uh, if a batch to batch analysis or indeed a biosimilar to innovator assessment suggest functional differences, then obviously the structural change resulting in that functional difference would need to be understood to either feedback in terms of the development of the product or really to understand what's going on and what may need to be controlled better in the manufacturing of the product. But similarly, the other, the other way around, you know, if, if, uh, if you see a structural difference you know, when you're looking at various batches of a product, then you would want to know whether that structural difference is functionally significant or not. Obviously, there are some structural changes that would not affect the, the function of the product. But if the structural difference does, then it does tell you a lot about the product and how you might need to control that critical attribute to be able to produce a, um, a product that is consistent uh, and can be manufactured in a consistent Sense. So it all feeds back to uh, to the development of the product as well. Yes, that makes sense. It's a good sort of overview of, of both sides and why they both have equal importance in the development of a biopharmaceutical. Uh, Richard, as your role as, as technical director, perhaps you could sort of go into a bit more detail on the structure function relationship and, and why it is so important to have strong expertise in both of these areas. Yes, certainly. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, so really all functionality or, or indeed lack of functionality of molecules uh, is directly related to molecular structure. Um, just as a couple of examples, molecular structure can affect how well the molecule binds to its receptor or, or indeed how well it's cleared from the bloodstream. Changes to structure can also lead to unwanted effects though as well, such as aggregation or also potentially an immunogenic response. But these effects can be mediated by all sorts of different structural features, not just the protein backbone itself. So, for example, post-translational modification, such as glycosylation, can have a profound effect on biological functioning. Glycan structures can control half-life in the bloodstream, for example, uh, receptor binding, and many other biological effects as well. So changes in glycans can have a significant impact on the functionality of the molecule. Furthermore, the overall three-dimensional shape of the molecule is important for biological activity. If the molecular shape is wrong, uh, then receptor binding can be adversely impacted or can be completely blocked. Uh, immunogenic epitopes can be exposed uh, and also potentially aggregation can occur, 
uh, all of these are very deleterious to the, the functioning of the molecule or also the shelf life of the product. It's also worth bearing in mind that through a, a detailed knowledge of the structure function relationship, it's possible to specifically engineer a molecule to exhibit certain required biological effects uh, and minimize uh, other unwanted effects. This is carried out through production of specifically designed molecular features leading to new drugs with better or more precise modes of action. So being able to perform analyses at both the structural and functional levels as part of a single investigative package allows strong conclusions to be drawn and a more rapid assessment of both aspects to be performed. Thanks, Rich. Um, Dan, I was just thinking within sort of Rich's um, uh, discussion there, he spoke a bit about some of the functional attributes that we need to be aware of. And obviously at, at Custom Biologics, this is really where your technical expertise lies. Is there anything that you'd like to, to pull out there or, or um, talk a bit more about? Well, I, I could add a, a few points. First off, I, I think Richard and Andrew did a, a wonderful job summarizing the importance of the whole structure function relationship when uh, one designs biopharmaceuticals. From a functional assay or functional testing perspective, it's also very key that the functional assays are important to be able to pick up those subtle differences in the structure of the molecule, whether it's to identify potential problems or differences or uh, hiccups, let's say, with the structure, with the production and with the structure of the molecule, or maybe to Richard's point, you want to design, you want to tweak the design of the molecule so that it does act a little better or that its function is a little bit different. In order to measure that, it's imperative to have very, very sensitive and accurate and as well as statistically significant assays that can measure those subtle differences in the structure of the molecule. So they, it's a very good job that they did summarizing it. Thank you. Yeah, it's really clear that, I mean, Custom Biologics and Biopharmaspec have their own areas of technical expertise, and they're certainly technically experienced in, in these respective areas of protein characterization. I mean, both CROs are, are small to medium-sized, um, and they have these niche-specific areas of expertise. Dan, do you feel that there are then certain benefits to working with um, smaller, more focused niche CROs? I do, in, in the sense that this is our expertise. This is what we do on a daily basis and what we've been doing for uh, 15 plus uh, years. Um, this adds tremendous value to a company or to a program that's developing a biologic because we are functioning, we, we are focusing on the structural and functional attributes of the product. That's what we know. Custom Biologics, as I jokingly say, we don't make it, we don't focus on making it, we focus on testing it. And working with small to medium-sized companies, that's their sort of focus and area of expertise. You get a lot of personal attention and you also get many, many years of experience having worked with many, if not all, of the molecules that are coming out on the market now. So uh, I think this structure functional relationship is key and I think it adds a lot of value to companies developing their biologics. And Andrew, Dan's speaking there, I guess, you know, as the president of, of Custom Biologics, so as the CEO of Biopharmaspec, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, Lindsay, in, in a, a lot of ways, um, we, we have common histories. Um, we've known each other for a long time, of course, but um, we have similar outlooks. And, you know, if you're trying to put together structural functional relationships, then those sort of things are very, very important, um, as well as obviously the significant expertise that's built up over both sides of the equation in terms of biopharm spec and custom over the years. And um, not just the expertise, I suppose, but the, the experience that we have, and that's not just in the products, the methods, the analytics, but that's understanding what the regulators want what do they mean with all the entries that are in the appendices of ICHQ6B, for example, in terms of structure and function? 
and what do they mean in terms of bringing all that information together to uh, report to the regulator and obviously get your product moving through development pathway and ideally onto the market at the end of the day. So I think in summary, you know, we're, we're, we're very similar. We understand each other, significant expertise and experience across the board. But obviously, you need flexibility in this. You know, we, we, we're obviously providing a service, as Dan said, in terms of a report about a product. And to be able to do that effectively, you need to understand the requirement of every client, of every product, uh, what is required, and you have to be flexible to do that. So we work very hard together. I know custom uh, is the same in understanding exactly what the requirements are and recommending the best approach based on you know where the product is in the pipeline, what level of data is needed and everything else. Uh, the other thing is that uh, because we understand each other so well, we can bring together the structure information with the function information or the functional information and provide comparative data across that breadth to our clients with both halves coming from this, you know, this bedrock of expertise. So, you know, we are, we are two separate companies, but, uh, you know, we, we, we have done a lot of uh, uh, analyses together and, and have learned from that in terms of bringing all that information and being able to provide, you know, even these overarching reports to really tell clients um, you know what the structure and, and how the function relates to uh, to that structure for for their product. Yeah, we've spoken you know a bit today about um, the the benefits um, that custom biologics and biopharma spec bring uh, together to clients, and these clients are you know the companies that are developing biopharmaceuticals. I wonder, Dan, if you could perhaps to sort of put things into perspective for us, give us a, or provide us with a, a case study that might illustrate, you know, how Biopharma Spec and Custom Biologics work together in this way, you know, a, a sort of more specific uh, case study that would help describe this. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it just it, it, to, to get into that, I just want to reiterate what, what Andrew said. He brought up a very good point about how the combined expertise, we know the, uh, sort of global regulatory requirements of what's required at the different stages of the project, uh, of the project and the product development. And in those lines, you often then come to the, um, the, the structure function relationship of the molecule. So we know that when we look at the functional activity of certain molecules, uh, whether it's an antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity or whether it's the ability uh, of uh, an antibody's FC domain to bind uh, a C1Q, the serum complement protein, we know that there is a structural component that influences its functional activity. We, we've seen this, we've assayed it, we've uh, looked at this many, many different times. And being able to sort of further characterize that from a structural perspective adds a tremendous wealth of knowledge to the uh, company developing this biopharmaceutical because they need to know this information at an early stage. They don't want to bypass this step, get it into a clinic or get it into some sort of trials and realize that hey, why isn't it working well? We thought it was going to do this. We thought it was going to, uh, uh, you know, kill the cells better. And we thought it was going to have a better function. So we know that when we look at these things, we're often comparing the molecules to a reference standard that has been thoroughly characterized and uh, uh, perhaps accepted uh, onto the market. So when we look at the functional activity of the molecules that the companies are developing and we see that there could be an issue they're not as functional or they're overly functional or or something's going on we often turn to a company like biopharma spec who's worked with these molecules on a structural level and where they buy whereby they can combine or provide really the structural information that could perhaps explain the results we're seeing from the functional uh, level and uh, many times we've seen this with antibodies and in particular as I mentioned with ADCC assays, C1Q assays, really assays that measure the functional activities uh, of the molecule and how the structural component is critical. Okay, thanks Dan. 
<laughs> Richard, if you think back to some of the sort of case studies and um, projects uh, that, that you've worked together where the structure and function has come together, um, and we've supplied some structural data. Is there anything that comes to mind that um, you would like to share a, as a case study? Um, yes, thank you, Lindsay. Yes, just just um, to kind of expand a little bit on what Dan has said. Uh, just taking one example that we we have worked on in the, the relatively recent past that was uh, antibody related. Um, we did some work uh, for a client who was looking at uh, a variety of uh, clones of a particular monoclonal. Um, the biological data uh, that Custom Biologics generated was indicating that there was variation in the, uh, the levels of uh, ADCC response uh, across these clones. A quite significant uh, variation uh, was seen. Um, our approach to analysing this in a structural sense was uh, really just kind of sort of focusing on the, on the, the glycans at, at this point because they are uh, intimately related to uh, levels of ADCC. Um, we released glycans from uh, antibodies from these different uh, clone types. Uh, the, uh, the glycans that were released were uh, fluorescently tagged. They were then chromatographically separated, uh, analysed by uh, both fluorescence uh, and mass spectrometry, so we generated mass uh, values for the, uh, the various different elute components as well as uh, fluorescence profiles. The data we got allowed us to identify those particular glycans component based on their masses uh, and to quantitate the relative levels uh, of the, uh, the separated components based on their fluorescence response. Um, when we took the data together, we were able to demonstrate that uh, the shift we were seeing in uh, profiles of the glycans in terms of the levels of fucosylated species uh, was completely supportive of the uh, ADCC data uh, that was generated by Custom Biologics. Uh, and when we were able to return all this back to the client, uh, they're very pleased. They were uh, able to then select, select a particular clone type uh, that they could then carry forward uh, to produce the, uh, the molecule uh, that had their particular needs. That's great. Thanks very much, Richard. It's really nice to have a, a sort of real example like that and we can sort of put everything into perspective. Well, thanks both, well, all to Richard, uh, Andrew and Dan um, for your time today and what was a really informative discussion. I really appreciate it.